Hey guys, welcome back to the RVH Sierra Alpha Build Channel. This video we're going to get the understructure pre-assembled, match drilled to final size. We're also going to attach the understructure to the skin, get that final drilled, deburr everything, and then dimple it. Alright, so now we get to do a little bit of fabrication here for the rudder. They give you a couple of dimensions. They give you this uh, 032 length aluminum, a little over about 36 inches long. So they give you some dimensions on the plans. You're going to cut it down to 14 and 3 quarters of an inch times two times for the R716s. And then you've got this little strip down here at three and a half inches that you're going to be using as a spacer for the R717. So basically I just threw the ruler up. I gave myself a little bit of an extra. I'm going to go ahead and get those cut down to size, trim the edges per the plans. I'm also going to go ahead and fabricate this R710 piece. You can see, similar to the stiffeners, you've just got these little notches. You're going to cut from notch to notch there. It ends up kind of bisecting that tooling hole. From looking at the forums and stuff, it sounds like we're going to be doing some match drilling, some rivet holes along the skin here, just on this side of that line. So we want to make sure that we don't trim to this edge too tight. We want to make sure that we have that, that minimum spacing that we're going to need for those rivets there. So I'm going to cut it just a little bit on the scrap side of the line and uh, and then we can always trim it in as necessary once we know exactly where those rivets are going to line up. All right, so now we got our R716 pieces trimmed. We got this end notched off per the plans and then we cut it to uh, length. We've also got our spacer R717 cut to length here as well, shortened down to half inch wide and then three and a half inches long. And then our R710 here, same deal, cut that line and just left a little bit of excess on both sides. So I haven't really cleaned up the edges yet just to make sure that we got enough space that we need for drilling those holes. Last little bit of fabrication we're gonna do for now, the end of our R704 rib. They've got these three holes in here for a plate nut that's gonna go in. So we're gonna drill out that center hole to 3 eighths of an inch using a unibit. It's another quick thing uh, that we didn't do before we get this assembled on this little spacer strip that we cut need to go ahead and match drill those number 30 holes that we've got as well. So I've got it lined up. I'm just using some clamps here. I'll drill those out to number 30 and Cleco it as I drill. So now we're going to install our 606 PP to the spar here. We got our 607 in the middle of the spar and our 608 at the top of the spar. And then down on the lower assembly, we're going to install our Clico, our 704 bottom rib, the 710, the 717 spacer as well as the R405 uh, PD bracket. Once we get those Clecoed, then we're going to end up getting them drilled out. But another quick thing I wanted to go ahead and make mention of, you'll notice on the R05 PD, you've got these two additional holes right here. Kind of move it up to the camera a little easier to see. They're also pre-punched on the R06 PP, those same two holes right there. They are not punched on the 802 rear spar, and the plans don't call for those two additional holes. They just call for this spacer with the three holes at the bottom of the spar. I did a quick search on Vans Air Force, and it sounds like just kind of a, a mix in, in your kind of dealer's choice. These two additional holes are actually for the RV14 plans for their rudder, but it uses the same parts as the 6, 7, 8, 9. I believe. So it, the consensus from the uh, Vans Air Force website and other builders that have talked to Vans or, or just kind of gone their own way, the aluminum that they give you to cut that spacer from is plenty wide enough that you could certainly cover that, that rivet hole spacing no problem. So some builders have gone that route. 
One of the recommendations is to simply follow the plans that you're given. So that's the route that I chose. So I went ahead and just stuck with the standard uh, 707, I'm sorry, 717 spacer with just the three bottom holes. And I'm just gonna leave these two additional holes on both the 606 doubler as well as the RO5PD blank. Now that we've got everything Clico together, now all we gotta do is start match drilling everything to number 40 eighth inch holes. So I'm gonna start with these nut plates. So what I did, just to help keep it straight, since there's only two holes, I've got a Clico on one half, I've got a rod in bearing on one side, uh, and then on the other side here uh, is gonna be the hole that I drill. So I just have this barely started in the hole, just enough to hold it in place, keep it from sliding around as I drill it, but not enough to, to clamp down on that nut plate. Next, we're gonna take our tip rib, 703, click that on to our 802 spar, match drill the number 30 holes. Then we're also gonna go ahead and click on our counterbalance skin into position on that 703 tip rib, match drill all of these holes around, then we can disassemble it, deburr it, and dimple that as well. Now that we've got the understructure all match drilled and final drilled to the number 30 size, I'm going to take the skin, attach that to the understructure as well as to the top rib, and then we're going to uh, final drill all of the holes that match up with the skin along the edges of the understructure and the ribs, the top and bottom ribs. Then we'll pull everything apart, deburr it, dimple the parts that need to be dimpled, like here on the understructure. All right, guys, if you're still here, thanks again for sticking with me through the video. Uh, you've seen we got the understructure pre-assembled, drilled out, uh, everything deburred, including the skin. We've also dimpled all the holes. Uh, one thing I did different in this video, I skipped over a lot of the deburring explanation and the dimpling explanation simply because I had that in the previous video. Let me know in the comments below if you want that still included in each video uh, so that each video is kind of a standalone uh, process. Otherwise, I'll keep doing what I'm doing, and thanks again for joining me. Next video, we're going to get the entire rudder assembly primed. Uh, I'm going to do a full video on that because I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff on YouTube or anything else that has a good explanation of the priming process. I use the Stewart Systems 
water-based primer. So I'm going to go through all the prep work that's involved as well as the actual uh, priming base coat with the Eco Poly Prime. So stay tuned for the next video and thanks again for watching.